And I think that Santana is an interesting um, guy because, like Tony said, there's the service time issues uh, where you want to have the control of the player for as long as possible. Uh, in these Tim Lincecum arbitration hearings that are going on, uh, it, it came out that had the Giants waited for six days to six days later to call up Tim Lincecum, he would not be in arbitration this year. He'd be in after next year. So you look at you know how much they're going to pay him this year. Not that Carlos Santana is a Tim Lincecum uh, type a talent, but you're talking about a full year where would you rather pay the guy you know a couple million dollars or a couple hundred thousand dollars if you're at the team you'd rather do um, obviously the latter uh, and I think Santana is the interesting one because um, it's been showing up on the uh, graphics here but Keith Law came out with his organizational rankings uh, by team the Indians came up at number four uh, but also he did his prospect rankings Carlos Santana came in as the third best prospect in baseball um, that's not you know in the AL Central that's the top prospect third to best prospect in baseball. Uh, you put him one ahead of Buster Posey, who's the prospect for the Giants, catching prospect for the Giants. Um, and Law had an interesting uh, take on uh, the Indians organization because he said that the Indians have these two impact players uh, in Santana and Chisenhall. He had Chisenhall as the 26th rated prospect in all of baseball, the number one uh, third base prospect in all of baseball. And then Law had an interesting comment. He said, you know, past those two, you get into a lot of depth. And it's interesting that he used that term because also on his top 100 list was um, Rondon, who was the number who was 51 on the list. Brantley was 60, uh, 71, and Hagedorn was 100. So that depth, you know, if you're talking about them not being impact, which is the term that he used for Santana and Chisenhall, those are still pretty highly thought of guys and guys that are uh, kind of at the upper levels where you're talking about Brantley, who's probably in Cleveland this year. You're talking about Rondon, who Tony just talked about, and Hagedon, who's 24 and could be fast-tracked because he's coming off of that injury. Uh, but it goes back to the point where, you know, Law talks about this depth. You know, they have a lot of these guys that, you know, pass the impact guys. Um, it, like it's a bad thing to have and I would say you know and I think Tony would say that the opposite that you know having more guys like that uh, allows you to have the potential that one of these guys does break out I mean Michael Brantley last year you know when um, all these prospects came out was nowhere to be seen well he didn't even have a, that great of a season in AAA but people finally started to take notice of his youth of his on-base ability and now you know Keith Law has him at number 71 MLB.com rated Brantley at the 46th best prospect in all baseball and so I, I think that these prospect things uh, are interesting because all of uh, a lot of people want to denounce this this depth approach that the Indians have but at the same time if you know if th that depth allows you to fill holes uh, from within without you know going out on the free agent market and doing what the Royals are doing then then that's that's a, um, a really good avenue to go down and that's what fell apart you know in the after 2007 is that those guys that the Indians counted on to come up simply didn't emerge and and, and you know the idea that uh, quantity you know throw it all up against the wall may be distasteful to some people because there's not that one guy to dream on um, you know past Santana and Chisenhall but at the same time we were waiting for Adam Miller to show up forever and he never did so you know as, as well placed as some of those you know hopes may be sometimes they, they go dashed. Yeah, and I, I think I've gotten a couple emails on that, on that Keith Law's comments on that. You know, when he says the whole depth thing with that, it's not the fact that after Chisholm Hall and Santana, everybody else is David DeLucci. Right. No, I, I mean, as you, as you can see, he has Rondon and, and Brantley and Hagedon. Uh, they're still in his top 50, 100 or whatever. Uh, what, what, he, what they mean is the team is, uh, the organization is deep. I mean, there's, you know, just when I'm coming up with my, with my rankings, it's hard to come up with a top 10 because there's, there's like 15, 20 guys that can fit into the top 10, and, and some of the guys that are going to be ranked 11 to 20, a lot of those guys will be in the top 10 for almost any organization. And then it goes beyond that, too. Like when you're ranking the top 20 or top 30, there's another 20 guys you're trying to fit in there. So that's what he just kind of means, which is there's a lot of depth. And just because a guy is viewed as an impact talent right now or not viewed as an impact talent doesn't mean he's not going to be an impact talent next year. That's how they view him this year. Right. So when he says, um, could mean Carlos Santana two years ago, going into the 2008 season, no one ever considered him an impact talent coming out of the Dodgers system. He wasn't even thought of. I mean, he was in the top 30, but he wasn't thought of in that way. So things change over the course of a season. And the thing, going, the thing with the Indians is, is with that depth, you've got guys like Knapp, Hagedon, um, uh, Rondon. Uh, Brantley will be, he'll, he'll, be, he'll no longer be a rookie, so he won't be eligible. But you got Weglars and, and Adam, uh, Alex White. you got all these guys that are going to be in that top 10 or whatever. 
that can elevate themselves based on their season. And then also maybe next year you're talking about Alex White as an impact uh, guy. De La Cruz, who's, who's healthy, and he would have been an impact guy if he was healthy last year because uh, a lot of people are really high in him. Um, so, and then uh, there's all these other guys coming up from the lower levels that, uh, you know, people like, but you, you kind of you need to see how they kind of shine a little bit. And, uh, you know, guys like Abner Abreu, um, Al- Alexander Perez, um, uh, Danny Salazar was getting a lot of uh, good run recently. Uh, a lot of these young guys in the lower levels, like in uh, Lake County and then Kinston, who after they have a good year, maybe this year, um, maybe they jump up and vault themselves. You know, if, if you have like a ranking system, you have like your fives, who are, I think uh, Goldstein does this, where he puts like a five. Well, the stars. Yeah, five stars, where he does like a Chisholm Hall and uh, Santana as a five. Then he'll have like a bunch of four guys and a bunch of three guys. You know, those guys that are fours this year, they can jump up and vault into a five. Because if Hagedon proves that he's healthy, he's got five stuff. I mean, he, I mean that's the thing. Right. And, and if he bounces back, well, he's, he's, he's getting up there in age. And then you got guys like Ron Doan. I don't think he'll ever be a five because you know, they have those three pitches that you want to have a pitcher. But you got a lot of, I think you have a lot of fours and a lot of three, four kind of guys that are, which is good. Because a lot of teams, when you get to their top 10 list, when you get down to their eight, nine, 10, teams view them as a three or a two even. So I think it's a little bit of a reaction to the fact that he calls them depth when, in fact, it's a good thing to have. Right. And and it should be noted that, you know, for all the, the rankings that come out, Tony actually puts together a book um, every year. It's an Indians top prospect book. Um, you know, if you enjoy uh, the Indians prospects or, you know, even the Indians, it, it's a great resource to have that Tony goes as in-depth as you could imagine on the strengths, weaknesses, you know, projected uh, ETA for some of these guys. This year, Tony, you expanded it to 100. So talk a little bit about how uh, people can go about getting that book. Well, it's actually still in the process of being finished. Um, I'm hoping that next week, at the end of next week, it's going to finally go to press. And because uh, like, actually, it's only going to be about, it's only like a week behind. Because like last year, at this time, it, was, it just came out. Uh, last year's version just came out. So um, I'm hoping if uh, I got some things I'm working on adding last minute, that's going to really spice up this year. Hoping those additions um, kind of add to the value of it. Because yeah, you know, I'm going to have a top ten Latin uh, ranking. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, uh, now when I say Latin, I'm not talking guys that are states. I'm talking guys coming over from a Dominican summer league last year. These 17, 16, 17 year old guys who are viewed as the top upcoming Latin guys. Uh, Guys you don't really hear a lot about until they emerge when they come to Lake County or to uh, Mahoney Valley or or even Kinston. So I'm gonna be talking about some of the guys that the Indians are really high on and also, uh, you know, a lot of people spend on that. And also I'll have all the different charts and stuff from last year. And I'm gonna have almost every player um, profiled. I think 170 players uh, they'll be in there. Now obviously the top 100 will have almost full page. Every player will have a full page report um, and then as you get more towards the organizational kind of guys, the guys are just kind of filler. You know, they'll have a good a, a write-up, but I mean, everybody's going to be featured, except, I think, except for five or six guys. And the best way to order that is to go to Indians Prospect Insider? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, probably initially uh, the best way. I, I'll, I'll have details on my site, IndiansProspectInsider.com. I'll, I'll also have it when I do my, um, I'm doing a countdown as, it, as we speak right now. Okay. Um, I do a daily countdown on my site, but also on the ClevelandFan.com and, S- and uh, SportsTimeOhio.com. I'm, every five prospects, I'm, I'm doing a countdown every five guys, it, it, usually about once a week. I'm, I just started this week. So I'll, I'll have details in that as well when it'll be available. But I'm hoping next week it'll go to press and I'll start taking orders. Okay.